Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to uh, make some amazing boxes for the game Villainous. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. So, when you open up this game, traditionally if you bought it, I'm guessing you probably have your cards stacked in some kind of a crazy way, but what I want to do today is show you how I made my deck boxes for our, oh man, for our different villains. I wanted that to go so much better. But take a look here. Every single villain has their own box. I still need to make one for uh, the Evil Queen. And I have the expansion pack and the regular version in here right now. So um, my printer's kind of sucky. So uh, take a look here. Let's look at Hades. So the way that I've designed these deck boxes um, is when we open them up, uh, we're, we have both our Fate deck and our Villain deck in here. I have things labeled so that when you're playing the game, you can have your uh, villain draw pile right here. And as you're discarding things, you can discard them on that side. Same thing over here. You can have your fate deck draw pile right here. And you can have your fate deck discard pile on that side. And so I've designed these in a way that those spaces are labeled. Um, and then not only that, this was kind of my favorite part, but so that other people can always see your goals, I have it so that the goals are seen like that. So as you're playing, you can look across the table and see what other people are trying to accomplish uh, if they can see far enough to see the deck box. So this is our goal. That's what we're going to be making today. I have all of the boxes made for the characters um, currently right now, except for the queen which we are going to be making today. So let's go ahead and uh, get that set up. I will be right back. All right, so here we have uh, the supplies that we're going to need. Now I have a paper cutter that's not required. All you really need are scissors and some tape. Um, but I like to use the paper cutter for my first big initial cut. So first things first, you're going to need to print off the template uh, from BoardGameGeek.com. I will have a link to that in the description of this video where you can find this template. Uh, there will actually be two different links, one for the base game villains and one for the expansion pack villains. So I'll have those two different links down there. But if you feel like this is a kind of a cool project and you want to see other deck boxes that I have made, um, there is another link in the description of this video for a web page that I just threw together um, that has different kinds of deck boxes for other games that I have worked on. So, well, I've just done the deck boxes. I had nothing to do with the games. Anyway, what you're going to want to do is get this printed out, um, and you want to print it out on cardstock. I don't know what kind of cardstock this is. It's just whatever they had at Walmart. I just went and picked up some cardstock, printed this off, and that's what I'm doing. So, once you have that printed off, the very first step that we need to do is we need to just cut the outline of this box out. Uh, that's what I use the paper cutter for. Now, uh, the tripod is sitting right here, and it is super awkward for me to work around that tripod when it comes to cutting out this paper. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out this outline, and I will be right back. You can do the same. Let's get uh, this party started. And we are back. So I've gone ahead and just cut out the outline of that shape. Uh, next thing is, what we need to do is cut out all of these weird shapes that have X's in them. Now, because you're watching this video, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I'm going to do two steps in one. First of all, I definitely need to cut out these shapes. But also, something that I couldn't add, I do all of my designs in Microsoft Word, and that's a little bit limiting in how I can make things look nice and presentable. Also, I want people to watch the videos to get cool tips on what to do. Um, but essentially, all of these white border parts that are going to be left over, I want them to be cut into trapezoid shapes. So um, you could, if you wanted to, just cut out the shapes on the dotted lines like that first and then go snip the corners, but I'm going to do that all at the same time. So let me do a sample and you can see. So rather than just cutting on this dotted line like that, I'm just going to cut it at like a 45 degree angle to that corner. And then I'm just going to go ahead and follow along the dotted lines. So we're going to go like that, following along the dotted lines. And then over here, again, you could just cut on the dotted line, but I know that eventually I'm going to want that to be a 45 degree angle. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it like that. So let's go ahead and hit the corners. I'm just going to work my way around. 
this shape and I wish I had like a, a cutting song that I could play. I don't really. Um, how was your weekend? I have a lot of allergies, but we're making it through. Okay, so I got those two corners cut out, so my shape kind of looks like this. Next up, I'm going to cut out this middle part, and same exact idea. You could just cut on the dotted lines, but I'm going to go ahead and cut the corners while I'm at it. And I'll also point out that there are a couple like L shapes of dotted lines I'm going to eventually cut, including this one down here. So I'm going to cut all the way down along that first dotted line, and I got to cut over like that. But notice, I need to keep that purple part. So now I'm going to move my scissors and cut right there. I'm trying my best to keep stuff on camera, but I struggle cutting while looking at the camera. Um, so I'm mostly just kind of guessing if I'm on there or not. All right, there we go. So you can see that's what it looks like there. And as I was going, I went ahead and cut that L. Now let's do this side bring that diagonal in. The amount that you're diagonaling those corners really truly do not matter. Like I said, I just kind of try to make it look pretty, not cut on the printing. Um, those diagonals are, you'll see what those are for in a second. All right, so go ahead and cut that until I get to there. Snip the corner. Okay, next up, we're going to cut here. Now, every time I've made these, I make a mistake on my first one or two tries. So it might be a good idea to just print out on normal paper, maybe in black and white, a practice one, just so you can get the hang of what's going on. But that's obviously up to you. Just don't be discouraged if you make a mistake or two. I have made a lot of mistakes, and I've made a lot of these boxes. So uh, last one, we got to get this top middle part here. So we'll cut at an angle. Cut down. Now notice there's no dotted line for me right there, so I'm going to cut my way over like that. Then I'm going to come start back at the top, cut at an angle, come down. This part will fall out, and I'll just keep going to make that L shape. Oh, come on. Uh, there we go, just like that. Okay. Cool. Um, now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut these other L shapes that I missed. So we're just going to cut down and over. This is probably my proudest design. This took maybe about five or six iterations to get it right. But each of these small squares that we're not cutting out of, but we're, you know, cutting around, has a purpose. And their purpose makes me so dang proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Can I toot my horn for a second? I I really love, this is my favorite project that I've done so far. I think it's so much fun. All right, so I now have cut on all of the dotted lines and I have those corners on those white parts cut as well. Now, uh, what we're gonna do next is I always do all of my cuts first, then I do all of my folds for next, and then I do my taping after that. So we basically need to fold on every single one of these solid lines. Uh, but there's a way to make it a little more accurate and a little faster, and I want to show you. So whenever I'm folding these kinds of things, I always turn it this side down. And a uh, couple of reasons I do that. I know it looks like we don't quite know where we're folding, but we'll work our way around that. And also, all of our cuts are going to really help us know where we should be folding. Now with these boxes, they're a little complicated. You can see the shape's a little crazy. The very first thing I want to do is fold every single one of these small squares forward. So I'm just going to take this small square, fold it forward. You should eventually see a line. Give it a crease with your thumbnail. Sometimes I'll use the butt of my scissors to make the crease nice and good, depending on how my hands are feeling. So go ahead and fold this square over. Give it a good crease. And we've got this one here. And we're going to give it a crease. Oh, I forgot that for these boxes, I'm going to grab a glue stick. It's not required. It just is going to make a thing nicer here in just a second. But let's not get too distracted. We're going to start off by folding each of these squares like that. Fold that square. Yeah, so these squares are super easy to fold. Again, the way that they're cut... It almost happens naturally. We just need to use our fingers to make sure that the creases look good. 
Let's see, we got that. Oh, I forgot to do the, that cut there. Darn it. I bet you saw that as well. Okay. There we go. We'll go ahead and make that here and this here. Okay, some totally optional supplies for this project are a pen and some glue. Um, this is a little silly. This is mostly satisfying my, my craziness. Um, but we're gonna just do tiny amount of glue on a thing. So if you look at this shape here, do you see how there's a square on this side, but not on this side? What I'm gonna do is just to remind myself, I'm gonna just kind of do a little scribble. Oh, come on, like that. Same thing up here. Here's a square on this side, but not on this side. I'm gonna do a little scribble like this. And eventually, I'm gonna be putting some glue. That scribble is just to remind me where that needs to go. Okay, so back to folding. Um, what we're gonna do next is we need to fold all of these lines here. But there's a way to do it that's a little bit faster and will make your project a little more precise. So I'm gonna start at this tab here. Okay, so looking, it's the two on the top and the two on the bottom. Let's start with one of these. Our first fold we're gonna make is gonna be this line right here at the top of this square. So basically through that scribble that I just did. If that's still not very clear, let's show you what I mean as I do it. So I'm gonna pull that forward and I'm gonna have, you see a white section and you're gonna have a colored section as well. And I'm gonna just use the cut marks down here to line up to make sure that this line on this between the colored part and the white part lines up with the cut that I did over here and it lines up with this square right there. I'm sure that was not super clear. Sorry, but <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. I do my first fold like that so that we've got these two sections showing. Now I'm gonna keep that folded and my next fold is gonna be along this line here. And you're gonna see it's also from here to here on the big box. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that forward making sure to keep it as precise as possible. Bring that forward and crease it down with either my thumb or my scissors like that, okay? So we just did two folds. That's gonna be the side of your box like that. You see what we did? Okay, so we're gonna do that all the way around. So again, first fold is this line on the top of those squares. Bring that down. Use your cut marks and this printed line to get that in the right spot. And then we're gonna fold one more time without unfolding. We're just gonna fold one more time right there. Sometimes you gotta push it a little bit or maybe pull it, it just depends. And make that fold like that. Okay, next up, turn it around, same thing. Above the two squares, there's a good folding line. We're gonna take that and fold it down there. And then we're just gonna go ahead and fold, I think my dog has allergies like I do. Okay, fold it like that. And then last one, take it, fold it down with a, oh, I went too far on that, that's okay. It's totally fixable. And then we're gonna fold it one more time like that. Okay, so, these are gonna be the sides of our boxes. You can go ahead and unfold them now if you'd like. And uh, now we've gotta do all the folds along the center. So this time we're not gonna fold above the squares for this top part, we're gonna fold right below the squares. So on these end parts, we're not folding on top of the squares, first we're folding right below the squares. But same idea, we're gonna have the white section and one of the colored printed sections. Go ahead and Give that a good crease. Oh, maybe I didn't do that one so great. It's still fixable. I'll just push it and recrease it. There we go, just like that. And then we're gonna do one more fold. I keep this part folded down and I'm gonna fold right here on that line. So just bring it down. Again, having pre-cut these things will help a lot. We've got that there. All right, next up, let's unfold that. Let's do this fold that's gonna be right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring that whole thing over. Again, I'm using those cut lines to help me get that fold in the right spot. Like that. And then 
I'm going to go ahead and pull this forward. Oh, I just messed up. That's okay. We can we can take mistakes. All right, so I've got those two middle folds done. A lot of times, I know because I built a lot of these boxes, I would always forget to do these. These folds are doable later on too. They're just a little more awkward. Okay, so back to this side. Remember, our first fold is under the two squares. So go ahead under the two squares, fold it down like that with a crease, and then fold on this line right here as best as you can get it. Don't worry if you need to do a practice one. I feel like Bob Ross every time I make these videos because they're just, it's just do it yourself, it's just imprecise. Okay, all of the folding is done, and now we're gonna make the magic happen. So. I'm going to start on the two sides with squiggles. If you didn't squiggle, it's the, it's the part that doesn't have the squares attached right here. That's going to be my starting point. Now, what I like to do is I do like to throw a little bit of glue on those squiggles now. And yeah, this is the smallest glue stick I happen to have in the house right now. <laughs> Don't ask me how that happened. But yeah, I'm just putting a little bit of glue right there. And this is going to sound really counterintuitive. And this part is tricky, so maybe watch me go first. We're gonna fold this part backwards for a second. It's gonna end up coming back together to glue on itself, but for right now, just fold it backwards. Okay, so it almost looks like we cut off the arms. Fold it backwards. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two squares, make sure that they're coming inward like this. Okay, I'm gonna try my best to describe it. So we're gonna bring that forward. And then we're gonna fold this top part up and over these squares making sure that the wings come along with it. So, so I've, I'm holding it like this and bringing this part up and over and down, making sure the wings go with it. And you can see the wings are going right there. Okay, so up and over and down. And what we're gonna do is you hold this as tightly as possible and I'm gonna add some tape. Now I'm gonna talk about tape here in a second. I'm gonna use this less see-through-y tape because this project we're only taping on the white paper and this is better tape for that. Okay, so a really quick word about tape. I have learned there is invisible tape, which is not so invisible, and there's transparent tape, which is super transparent. On this one, normally if I'm ever taping on printed stuff, I'll always use the transparent tape, which is shiny and really see-through. But for this project, we're only going to be taping on the white part, which means I'm going to use the invisible tape, which is not so invisible, but it looks a lot better. It looks less shiny. It disappears more into the paper. Okay, so that's why I'm using this kind of tape here. Now, before my glue dries, so you can see we've got these wings right here. It is possible you might need to trim just a little bit off. I'm a little worried about that side. We're going to see. But essentially, all we're going to do is we're going to fold that up and over like this and pinch it closed like that. Make sure that it is as flush as possible. And we're gonna just throw a piece of tape right there. Now we put some glue here just to pinch that closed and make it look like a solid piece of paper. Uh, I hadn't done that in the past and it was always just like a little bit like bubbled and I didn't like that. So that's what that little bit of glue is. So as the glue is drying, let's keep this moving. Same thing, I'm just gonna wrap that up and over, pinch it closed, especially pinch the glued part so that it looks like one nice piece of paper and go ahead and throw some tape on it just like that, okay? I know that was kind of crazy. We had tabs going all over the place, but look at how nice those corners end up being when we have all of those tabs, it makes the connection super sturdy because we have tabs going both directions. Oh man, I get, I'm just proud of myself, I gotta say. Okay, so let's do the other side. Just a reminder, we're gonna take the arms, we're gonna cut them off backwards, okay? Take the arms, cut them off backwards. Oh, actually right before we do that, no, 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 yeah, we're good, okay. So take the arms, cut it off backwards, sorry. I was thinking about a different box. Now we're gonna take these tabs Fold them inward like this. Bring this part up and over, bringing those tabs with it like that. Make sure that you pinch things as securely as possible. And we're just gonna throw some tape 
down like that. Okay, no need to glue this part because these tabs are actually gonna hide the bubble that I was talking about. In fact, maybe I'll even be able to show you, but all right, so this, we're just gonna wrap it up and over just like that. Pinch it closed as tightly as possible. And then when I say pinch it closed, I'm talking about like the base. You wanna make sure that the base is connected to the other base. You could use some glue if you wanted to. I just don't see the reason because we're doing such a good job with our taping. And then our last side, Again, I still have these tabs available because uh, in most of the designs, there's usually a word right there. This was just defeat Snow White. Okay, and then we're gonna just bring this tab up and over, give it a good pinch like that. And we'll go ahead like that. Perfect. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm a little bit shaky because I'm so excited. So uh, here, you can, can you see it? It's like, it's like it just isn't all the way together. And that's okay because this is going to hide it like that. But on this side, I need, needed to glue it. Don't judge me. Okay, next up, we're just going to take our deck of cards. I just barely picked up the expansion the other day. So go ahead and unwrap that, get it out of the box. Now, the first time you do this, it's going to be a like it's super tight. All of these measurements are pretty exact, which means since our folding and stuff isn't exactly precise, um, it's gonna be a little bit tricky, but I like to put this on the side with the wings. Close the wings over, that just kind of holds it closed as you bring this part up and over. And again, the first one or two times that you close the box, it's not gonna go as smoothly as you want it to, but I promise it will eventually get there. You just gotta be a little bit patient. Make sure the first time you close the box, make sure the cards are in there. Otherwise you sometimes crush the box accidentally. But I can just go ahead and push that closed. Make sure that all of your creases are nice and secure. And we have a deck box that we can now open. To open it, just push it like that. Open it up, you've got your cards ready to go. And after your first tricky closing, it will always go smoothly after that. And now, just a couple of words about how to fit these in. You'll notice I kept the original insert here, okay? And what I did is, uh, I don't even know that I could recreate it, but um, on the original insert, this part was up and elevated and the cards were stacked on either side. But if you kind of lift the insert out, it will disassemble itself. Like it used to be, it used to be like, like this-ish. Is that making sense? So I just took it out and opened it and, and it looked like that. So then I just folded this over. Now it's gonna be a little bit pop up y, but that's okay. I'm just go ahead and tuck this down like this. Okay, and you're gonna have like a little bump and that's all right. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take all of our decks, line them up away from the bumpy part and then just kind of splay them out like that. You want them to kind of go down-ish because this thing, as much as I love the cauldron, it is a little bit problematic. You can see I didn't even empty my power tokens in here from the expansion, but I have all of these characters on that side. But essentially, it is a little bit tricky once we have all of those cards in to fit all of these player boards so that it stays flush but if you just do your best to kind of push those down, they'll be easily accessible. The lid might ride up just a little tiny bit, um, but I guess you just have to decide exactly how you want to fit it. An alternative solution is one that I don't like as much, but you could just stack these in sets of three like that. It just is less, it's less pretty and less accessible. So I like to just keep them out like this. Okay, go ahead and I think I put three on this side and sorry, I'm bumping the camera, six on that side. It doesn't really matter. And then we're gonna go ahead and pack that up and boom, got it. Oh, this is my proudest achievement. I have another project coming up that I just, I'm almost ready to do that I'm a little bit more proud of, but man, I love these a lot. So yes, there you go. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this and if you thought it was helpful, please share it with other people. Um, it's, it's for the sharing. It's a fun project to do. It'll take some time with these boxes to get all nine characters made. 
turn on a movie, binge something, make your boxes. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you are interested in other projects, check out my website uh, in the link of this video. I will talk to you guys later. Goodbye.